Hi everyone, welcome back to Right Media. I'm Chamitu Amarasekere and this is my sister, Damsini Amarasekere. So today we will be talking about, actually today we don't have a general topic to talk about. Let's just discuss the situation in the world, the situation in the country. Let's see what topic we can merge this discussion into. So, shall we talk about the issues that young people face in Sri Lanka today? Like, a lot of people want to leave the country. I think um, one of the biggest problems that young people in our country today face is that from when we are young, we are kind of fed into the idea that Sri Lanka is inferior and that white um, countries or simply developed countries are better. So the aspiration that we are all fed into is to learn well, go abroad and get a job. So, so today a lot of people, everyone is trying to somehow leave the country get educated, do a job, somehow do something and leave the country. They think every other country is better than Sri Lanka. But what they don't realize is there are serious problems in other countries too. For example, UK is going through a severe economic crisis and USA they have severe violence rates. So people don't realize that the grass is not always greener somewhere else. They don't appreciate what we have here. So they're always trying to leave and but then don't you think it's justified that they are trying to leave considering the situation? But then if we do leave, or like if all our skilled professionals do leave, then the country will not simply not get better. And if your only aspiration is to try to develop a better life for yourself and your family, I think that's just taking a shortcut because you can do that in Sri Lanka as well because we have a lot of skilled professionals coming up. But someone can say, why should I stay here? If I go to another country, I can get a better job, earn a much higher salary, live a better life. Why should I stay here to support this country? Why should I do that? Um, well, to start off with, the other countries are not always amazing. As you said before, the grass is not always greener. And a lot of the people that migrate face a lot of issues like gun violence, racism. And why should we leave a country, why should we get educated in our country using all the resources that we have been provided and then go to another country and be treated as inferior when you can simply stay in your country and make it better? That's right. So if I stay here, I'll be the citizen of Sri Lanka, I'll be a Sri Lankan. So if I go to, why should I go to another country and be a second or third citizen of some country? Exactly. Yeah. So what you said is migrating like that is ethically wrong when you take all of the resources that Sri Lanka has to give you and you go somewhere else and completely forget about the country. Going somewhere else and developing your life, that's okay. But if you completely forget about Sri Lanka, if you don't return anything to your motherland, is that right? Uh, no, migrating, there may be reasons why you may migrate. For example, your family may be abroad or there can be reasons, but we you shouldn't really forget your country. Exactly. Like, as a nation, we have been through a lot. Like, we have had uh, colonial colonization, so many foreigners taking over our country, Portuguese, Dutch and British. And after that, recently also, we've had um, the civil war, 30, decade, 30 years of insurgency. And there's also been JVP insurgencies, two violent insurrections. And we have survived. We have come up through all of that. So this is just an economic issue. So if we all stay back, we can rebuild this. Exactly. And the thing is, here it's not mostly not a logical form of uh, if we migrate, this happens and we can have a better life. More, it's more like where children are fed into the idea that whatever happens, going to any other country is better. I've heard the phrase, So it's like just a very built up idea, a sort of romanticized idea that another, any other country is better than Sri Lanka. If we look at the ethical issue, for three decades Sri Lanka was going through a civil war. The Sri Lankan military had a humanitarian operation against terrorists and hundreds of thousands of people, hun so many people sacrificed their lives, sacrificed their limbs, sacrificed their blood to protect our country from terrorism. Ensure that we have a country to live in. So what's the point of all of those sacrifices if we just leave that country and go? Exactly. And to this day, there are war heroes that are suffering in homes with no families because with no limbs and they can't speak and all of that for what? And now yeah, What must to? those people be thinking? They gave their hands, legs, sometimes they even gave their lives to protect this country. 
But what's the point of doing all? They could have just stayed back at home and let terrorists take over the country. Because if at the end of the day we're all going to leave. So what must they be thinking when they stay back and watch everyone leave in the countries anyway going to ruin? Exactly. And if everyone who can leave leaves anyway, who is going to be there to rebuild the country? Like even politics. Politics is in Sri Lanka, it's looked as a very dirty topic, right? A dirty profession. Like if a child says, I want to grow up and become a politician, I don't think their parents would like that because it's a very dirty, muddy field. They wouldn't want their children to get their hands dirty. But someone has to do it, right? Again, these also like joining the military. Like when there's a war going on, no parent would want their son to join the army or navy because they might end up dying. But someone has to go and do that. If everyone is scared to do that, who is going to do what needs to be done? I think politics should not be a taboo topic. Politics, you should not discourage people from professionals, educated people from entering politics because someone has to come in and change that. And uh, the thing is, people who are trying to leave the country are the educated professionals. So when it comes to people who are actually controlling the country, we have a lack of people who are actually educated in the subject in which they are controlling. For example, if the minister of a certain ministry, uh, ministry is not educated in what they are trying to manage, then that isn't really going to be effective. Yeah, for example, if the finance minister is someone who is not an economist, he doesn't know what, what is going on in his ministry. What's the point of all the minister secretaries, the economists who are advising him? So what's the point of all their advice if he cannot understand what's being said? I think politicians need to have minimum educational qualifications, like a private company. They're not going to appoint anyone as the CEO, as OCTO, OCFO. They appoint someone who is capable. So why should cabinet ministers be any different? Currently what is happening is the person who can talk best, the person who can get the most votes of the person. most charismatic person, they get the most votes and they become politicians and usually the person with most votes becomes the cabinet minister. And a person who is educated might not be able to talk the same way. They might not be able to appeal to the masses. So they might not be able to get into parliament and even if they do get into parliament through national list, they might not be as powerful because they don't have that much votes. So they might not get into the important cabinet ministries. So I think if everyone in parliament has minimum educational qualifications, then I think even if those people who can speak well but can't do anything, they wouldn't be able to get in because they don't have those qualifications to get in. And uh, the thing is where the public also has the attitude that if a person is not very forward and if they don't um, hug children, knock his children and shake hands, that they're not going to be a worthy leader. And to some extent, that can be they, that can be justified by the fact that if you're going to lead the people, you have to. Yeah, a leader you know, has to be inspiring. Yes, like but he has to have a certain degree of charisma. Yes, but they also need to be educated. And I think the Sri Lankan population has yet to come to that level where they will support someone who's educated over someone who's charismatic. But I think on the other hand, if a person is not like if there are two people, one person is educated, but he cannot speak that way. He can't appeal to the general population. He doesn't have charisma to lead. And there's someone else, he has not gone to school, not passed any exams, but he can control a crowd. He can speak to people, he can appeal to people. So when there's two people like this, and even if the educated person becomes the president, the other person might be able to influence the president because he has the power of the people. He he can enforce his ideas and there could be internal conflict where the educated person can try to implement his policies but he wouldn't be able to get anywhere without the charisma and the ability to control people. Yeah, and I think the thing is even if the educational pers educated person does something, it's mostly the charismatic person that gets the credit. Even though uh, the hardworking people do a lot of work and everything, it's the people that appeal to the masses that get the credit and people are going to keep on voting for that person instead of simply looking at the situation and realizing that. So this is a fundamental problem with democracy, don't you think? So how can we, could we change the way that people think just like that? Because for years, people have been voting for the same people, the charismatic people. So how can we suddenly change that? Uh, I don't think, um, 
democracy is a very important um, aspect of a country. Of course, we can't lead the way a certain group of people want to. But I think also there should be a certain group of educated professionals that can uh, certainly... Uh, but where are the checks and balances for that? If those educated people can... They are not accountable to anyone. They are not accountable to the general public. So what if those people are corrupt? What if those people are the ones who are trying to reap maximum benefit for themselves, then what happens? I think, I don't think there's a direct answer for something like that. No, I, there simply is no prob, uh, proper answer to that question because when it comes to democracy, it will always be the opinion of the masses, as we were discussing before. And when it comes to majority of the people, they think in emotions. And they're easily manipulated by a very emotive campaign or some sort of thing. So it may be very hard um, to get the most logical decision out of a mass of people. So. I think a fundamental issue is people can't differentiate between what they need and what they want. For example, right now, there are a lot of state-owned enterprises running a loss. How can we finance this loss? We'll have to continue taking loans and that's not sustainable. We have to somehow restructure these SOEs and do this, like for example, Zipetco. We might have to increase petrol prices from time to time. But people will not want that. They'll protest against that. And at the same time, they'll also protest against taking loans. So people don't realize what they actually need. Sometimes leaders have to make the tough decisions. Yeah, that's the thing. As I said before, the masses are driven by emotion. So the second there's a emotive social media campaign or uh, media campaigns showing that um, people there is corruption, they're going to believe that over, um, obviously there is going to be corruption, but uh, sometimes they are driven by these campaigns and don't stop to think logically. And this can cause a huge impact because if you're all going to gather together and go on a protest when that was not logically thought out, then that's going to be a humongous problem to the country. I think fundamentally it is important to uphold law and order. You talked about protests. I think it is important to make sure that there is law and order in this country. If you look at the Russian model, after the Soviet Union collapsed, Russia's economy was in a terrible state. But now it is rebuilding. It's at a very good level. And throughout those 20, 30 years, there has been one man at the top. It has been Vladimir Putin throughout. I think a fundamental issue is when politicians change, when governments change, policies are also change. Like, a country can't go in this direction for five years and then go in this direction for another five years, you'll still be at the same place. So I think we need to keep going in the same direction. Even though governments change, I don't think fundamental policies should change like that. Like, if we look at countries that have been immediate, like, taken out of poverty and into a developed status in a short period of time, like Russia and China, they've had constant policies throughout. If I come and say, we need to do this, and in the next election I get defeated, and another president comes and says, no, we have to do this, and reverse all of those policies, then where will we end up going? I think one important factor in the development of countries such as Russia was that there was a lot of hardships that the normal people had to face. And through that, they worked very hard. They didn't complain, they didn't have protests because obviously they knew the protests were going to be repressed. But the point was that um, they worked very hard and law and order, as you said before, was enforced very harshly when it came to Russia. And I think that um, discipline that was there and instilled in the Russian population was one humongous factor in the development. Certainly, if we need to develop, there definitely needs to be discipline in society. If there is no law and order, if the, if the people don't respect what the government or the military wants, the whole society as a whole will crumble. The, there will be common thieves on the road, murderers on the road, and people will do what they want. There will be no one to correct them or stop them. So I think as a society, we need to be more disciplined as a whole. And uh, when talking about policy changes with governments, I think politicians are, have a key role to play. F instead of looking at their personal benefit, instead of always looking at how can I win the next election, they should look at what I can do to develop this country. For example, if a new president comes, what he will try to do is he'll try to eliminate the previous 
the opposition he has to him. He'll try to destroy the character of the previous government. They may so try that, to reverse positive yeah, changes. Yeah, in the yeah. next election, so that the previous government would not stand a chance. They try to reverse those policies and make it seem like they failed. But at the end of the day, it's the country that fails, not those politicians. And I think one thing that politicians have failed to realize is that if they work towards their own personal goals and not towards the countries, it's them themselves that's going to kind of fall. Because in the long run, when the country hasn't developed, like the current economic crisis where it, it has come across through 20, 30 years, or you could even say 70 years of wrong decisions, wrong policies being enacted, you could say all of that contributed to the economic collapse that we're in. So all of that is because politicians looking at the short term gain. But in the long term, when the country collapses, that's also bad for the politicians. Because in the end, that people will not support them anymore. So they should also look at their long term benefits too. Yeah, and they should also not only work for themselves, uh, but obviously it's going to benefit themselves. But I think pol like when you enter politics, you need to be patriotic. Because if you're going to enter politics and then work for your own political agendas, that's not going to really be sustainable for yourself or the country. So anyone that enters politics, I think politics and military should be, uh, people that enter it should have the same mindset. That you're going in trying to defend your country and trying to improve the situation of the country. Yeah, but politics and military, those are fundamentally two separate things. I don't think a military general has the capacity to do politics because politics involves talking with a lot of people, looking at a lot of people's opinions. You need to take opinions from everyone and in the end you should make the correct decision. But what a general does is when a general gives a command in the field, his subordinates have to follow it. I don't think that's a good framework in politics because you need to consider all of the options, take, talk, connect with a lot of people. So. Definitely, but uh, the fundamental values that they both should have is that they're going into this with knowing that they could result in problems for themselves, but they're still going in knowing that they're making this sacrifice for their country. Yeah, so we should en encourage educated people, academics, professionals to actually enter into politics instead of just staying at home and criticizing everything that happens. You can stay at home, watch news and criticize the government, criticize the opposition, no one's doing anything, why don't they do this, they can do this. So they should actively engage in these things. You could stay at home your entire life and not do anything and simply criticize, or you could actually go and make a difference. When it comes to criticism, I think that's one of the biggest problems that the Sri Lankan public faces. They're very critical of everything they see. If um, they see something that is out of the ordinary, they, that is not useful, that is not, that they're not used to seeing, they find, they're, they're very critical of it. And the second that the country faces a hardship, you find a lot of people getting drunk and going on the road, um, bad-mouthing the government. But wouldn't that ultimately cause the downfall of the country if everyone's going to be on the roads and criticizing instead of trying to do something? Yes, no, if that happens, then nothing will happen. A country cannot go forward. And also, um, Sri Lankans find it very hard to adapt, adapt to new changes in the society. Like, um, I still see a lot of people, there's a lot of uh, systemic racism and sexism going on in the country, where people find it very difficult to move away from the mindsets that their parents and their grandparents have handed down to them. where. Um, women are still seen as inferior or some races may still be seen as inferior and I think to develop as a country we need to move away from those ideals. Yeah, definitely. Like if you look at India, they have a very, very prevalent caste system where people from lower castes are looked down upon. Like I think situation in Sri Lanka is much better than that because um, it is certainly much better than that, but at the end of the day, we have to always, always we have to think that we are all one, ra one race, human race. So, if there is a person that, if there is a vacancy to do a job, and if that person 
it's a, it doesn't matter if he's Sinhala, if he's Muslim, Tamil, or whether he's a man or a woman. If he's the best person to do the job, then that should, person should be appointed. Yeah. We need to follow a system of meritocracy. You know, I don't believe in systematic representation, uh, representation because what they say is proportional representation is this proportion of the government should have female people. This proportion should have Tamils. This proportion of the employees should be Muslims. I, I don't believe that because that might result in some people like who are men not being able to get that position Even because people in, believe yeah. that a woman should get that position in the name of equality. Yeah, it should be mer pure meritocracy. Best person for the job should get the job. Definitely. So, we certainly have a lot more to talk about, but for today, I think this was a very fruitful discussion. So, hope to see you soon at Right Media. Thank you.